All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Um, today, we're going to be doing a little shop work. Um, got a lot of little things. Uh, so just to bring you up to speed on the, on the tractor is, uh, assembly, the engine is in. As you, if you've been watching, you've seen that that's in. Um, the front axle is back under it, so it's sitting on all four wheels again. Um, we started to get some weather, so and I got to work on it outside, right outside the shop here, and it's unprotected. And so, really don't want to work on it when we're getting moisture. I don't want anything exposed, so I just kind of buttoned everything up and tarped it off. Um, I think the weather's going to clear up a little bit and give us, I probably only need a few hours um, out there to get all the rest of the things hung back on the motor and, um, and, and we'll be getting close to the point where we might be able to try to fire this thing. But in the meantime, there's some stuff that can be done here in the shop. Um, so we got things like the uh, instrument cluster. I'm rewiring it, adding all new gauges. I'm rewiring the whole tractor. I just stripped all the wiring out of it when I pulled it down because it was all old and brittle and had been patched and spliced. And so we're just gonna start from scratch and rewire the whole thing. So we got the instrument cluster, it's right over here um, to go. I got to put the air cleaner housing back together. I had to um, drill out some rivets to get that uh, filter media out of there. Um, to clean it so that all has to go back together and then I'm gonna have to uh, fire up the the wire feed and just kind of tack that back together uh, we've got just a lot of little things to button up so we'll work on those here in the shop and um, yeah and we'll we'll get that going so that when the when the weather clears up a little bit we get a couple of dry days I can get out there and get the manifolds and all that on there um, I got to run new uh, fuel supply lines. The old ones were all, were, were, they're copper, of course, and they're all just been kinked and bent. And one of them has been somebody did a field fix and, and brazed it up because um, they couldn't evidently get to the parts store or the hardware store and buy some new 3 8 copper tubing. So we got the, um, all that. Um, got to get the gas tank back in. Um, and I've got a new fuel gauge, fuel sender that it's a universal. I gotta figure out how in the world I can get it into that tank and, and use it. So uh, we'll go over that here on the bench with you in just a minute. Okay, time to get some bracketry back on here. Um, I wanna get this stuff on so that I can, I'll be able to set the hood back on, um, at least to try to keep moisture off this engine and so get just a couple of these pieces on that way the i can just kind of set the uh fuel tank back on because that's what the back of the the uh, hood rests on right about here the fuel tank sits on top of this bracket so i'll get some of this stuff on and then we'll start hanging exhaust manifolds and things like that on here piece by piece thank goodness for a good parts manual so I can remember how all this stuff went together it's been so long since I took it apart but we're getting it it's really pretty simple that now see the next
next thing is this little bracket right here. I don't know if you can see this. Hopefully you can. This little bracket goes underneath this power steering valve over here. So, let's see if we can slip that in. Had to come off in order to get those back bell housing bolts out. find the rest of the bolts here be right back. okay so we got so the the power steering pump or power steering valve is uh bolted back down this little plate had to be bolted on then the valve bolted down to the plate the bracket that supports the uh, fuel tank um, is bolted back on and th that all had to come off because it bolts the uh, the top two uh, torque tube bolts hold that on so that's all on there this is the bracket for the uh, air filter uh, just went ahead and put it on because now it's a good time to get it on there and because uh, I can reach down into the bolts and what have you so so that's on so now I can just at least just set the fuel tank in here it's not ready to go back in. I've got a new sending unit I've got to adapt for it. Um, I've got it sitting, I've got it sitting over there on the ground. But at least if I set it in here, then the then I can put the hood down on it. And that will help. So I think the next thing we'll do, we gotta plug some holes up here because um we got some weather coming. <laughs> if you can see, but off in the distance it's snowing on the foothills around here right now. And uh, it's not supposed to be much of a storm, but anyway, I want to get the, some of this stuff sealed up. So I think we'll drop the injectors in, get those bolted down. Um, once those are in, then I think I'll go ahead and put the intake manifold on. And then we've got the exhaust manifold. I hope you can see it over there. we got to put it on. Um, just get some things buttoned up so this thing is uh, weather tight. So I'll be back with you in a minute here. We'll get those injectors dropped in first. Okay, got the injectors in. I didn't film it. I guess I should have been, but it's really, they just dropped down in there. And uh, you could only, there's a copper washer on the bottom of them. You got to make sure that that's on there. And then they just drop down in. And then you just torque them down. Um, no big deal. Um, the lines, of course, go right here. And I've had that all off. So that's a little jacked up. Um, and I've got new rubber seals for the, for this, for these high pressure return lines. Um, so I gotta put those on yet, but since this is off, it doesn't wanna line up too well, but it will. I just gotta uh, get this pump squared away. Those lines have been jounced around and so, but anyway, they're on there at least. I can't, I won't get any water infiltration down through those i better go find my dipstick and put it in the dipstick hole um maybe i will switch to the other side i guess i could get this exhaust manifold on here but maybe i mean i don't think i'm not gonna get any water in there i can tarp it off so um, I don't have a um, valve cover gasket under there yet. I should probably do that. And I also discovered, I'm not sure I can get the fuel tank in there with this, uh, this bracket that I just bolted on. I may need to take that back off, um, to get the fuel, uh, fuel tank in there. Uh, I don't know if it'll slip through from the backside or not. Maybe it will. Um, so... It's kind of snowing, spitting some snow here. I'm just looking for anything that could give me and give water an opportunity to get in. I guess I'll get that uh, valve cover gasket on there and get the seals in the tops of these because those could definitely pull up some some water. They got a big rubber 
grommet that goes in there that prevents that. Um, so I better get that on here next. That and the valve cover gasket and uh, that dipstick. That's about all. That's about the only places water could get in now. I've got the, this is where the thermostat goes, but because it wouldn't matter if water got in there, as long as it didn't get too much that it would freeze and break. I gotta get the power steering. I gotta get a new filter and O-ring for that. Then I can bolt that all back up, put it on. The oil filter housing goes right down there. Starter, of course, right there. This is where our uh, temperature gauge will go. This is where it used to have a solenoid um, for a preheat for the intake manifold. But that unit is the, the heating element is broken and I am afraid to put it back in. So it obviously never is working. I never had trouble with it in cold weather last winter um, starting. So I, I think I'm just not gonna go back together with that. I don't seem to be able to really find one of those units. I can show you here. So this is the, this is the intake manifold. Um, goes on there like so um, and this is that heating unit and it, you can see it's just got a it's got a spring and it would get direct voltage and it would heat that spring up and heat preheat the intake air um, but I don't know if you can see this you, uh, let me see if I can get it twisted around here um, see that right where that uh, <laughs> where that coil has come unsoldered or unwelded from this, and uh, you know, I guess I could attempt to weld that and see if this thing would work. But other guys have warned me they've seen in the past where these things will break apart, and then of course it sucks those spring parts right down into the um, intake, and so. I think what I might do is just saw this whole thing off and just put this back in as a plug. I might even see if that's just, I don't know if that's pipe thread or what it is there. I don't think so because it screws in too easy. It's some sort of a, but I might see if I can come up with just some sort of a plug for it instead. Um, so I'm not really going to worry about the, the whole heating issue you can see that thing right there where it has come undone and it's been bad for a while because it's been rubbing around in there but um yeah so i don't think we'll worry about that so we're not going to put that solenoid back on so come back over here the motor what else is left here that we so as far as things that hang off it yeah starter um power steering injection pumps already on the oil filter mount um, got to get a couple of new fuel filters and put the fuel housing, fuel filter housing. That all mounts right here on these three on this side of the motor. Um, this is where our oil pressure sending, uh, unit goes. Um, yeah, so we're getting close here. So yeah, hang on and I'll come back and we'll uh, get that valve cover gasket and those grommets on there. Okay, so there we are. Um, just lay this gasket on here for now. I'm not going to worry about gluing it or anything. I just want it on there to seal up, seal out any moisture. Should any get to this, I don't think it will, but um okay and the valve cover itself sits down on there sits down on this stuff. okay and these are those rubber grommets that drop down in there down into that well and seal that up so we'll put these on there's a bracket that goes from the air filter housing down to, I think this front one, um, to just stabilize it. But 
I uh, took that air filter housing all apart. I ground the spot welds off and took it apart in order to clean the the medium that's inside there. It's uh, it's this kind of steel wool type stuff, and I took it down to a friend's place and ran it through the hot hot parts washer just to clean it up and and um and now i gotta put that all back together and then spot weld it or i'll wire feed it back close i'll show you we'll we'll film all that i'll explain all that when the time comes um right now just get this torque down to make sure like i say i'm gonna go ahead and tarp everything anyway but can't hurt um oh that reminds me i gotta get a hydraulic filter i've never even had that off so i'm gonna unscrew that too and um get that taken care of but that'll come later uh so all these lines we'll get those on there i'm just gonna try to getting started right now sorry about this gosh started anyway so yeah so i gotta make uh, so i gotta get that fuel tank in once it's in when i finally do bolt it up permanently um then i got i'm gonna run new copper lines they were all one of them had actually been brazed up they must have must have been a field repair um where it had rubbed through uh, from vibration and and somebody had brazed it so i'm gonna run new copper line from everywhere that needs to be so it comes from let's see the gravity ah, i can't remember but anyway there's like three copper lines that i gotta build and um so i'll make new ones for those um so there's that i'll get the dipstick get it stuck on there then i think we'll try to get that fuel pump on it's snowing now so i'm gonna call it a day here in a minute